Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 BMW M4 Competition X-Drive Convertible. We've put a ton of miles on this car this week. We drove it around the perimeter of Michigan, so a little over a thousand miles total. So we've got some more driving impressions for you than we usually would on our normal testing regimen. So some information about this car. We have a 503 horsepower 3 liter twin turbo in line six. That puts power down to all four wheels through a ZF eight speed automatic transmission. It's only available in X-Drive competition form. So uh, it's interesting because that's kind of a uh, focus group spec in my mind, but that's okay. If you want a manual, if you want a rear wheel drive car, you gotta go for the slick top M4. It's significantly heavier than the M4 Coupe uh, at about 4,300 pounds. For reference, the M4 Coupe is about a little under 3,900 pounds. So it's got some extra weight. It does have a cloth top now instead of the folding hard top compared to the previous generation. That saves some weight uh, and it's still very well insulated, very quiet, very nice to live with at speed. Uh, you'll notice here we do have a crack in the windshield. Unfortunately, that was the only casualty on our 1,000 mile road trip. Anyway, let's walk you around this new M4 convertible. We'll show you what it looks like inside and out, and then we'll take it for a drive and give you some impressions on what it was like to live with this week. It's a pretty expensive spec on this press car. We have carbon ceramic brakes and the M Sport carbon bucket seats, which are actually pretty good on a road trip. Of course, the infamous Bavarian Beaver front grille. Don't forget to brush your teeth, wipe off all the bugs. Love the look on these wheels. These carbon ceramic brakes are fantastic, even on the street, even though they're probably overkill on a car like this. This M4 convertible is a little bit softer, a little bit less aggressive than its M4 hardtop counterpart. Of course, weight has something to do with that. And also just the character of this car is a little bit, it's a little more of a cruiser, a little more of a GT car, which I think is actually kind of nice. It's a decent daily driver. It's comfortable enough. It even has a reasonable amount of storage in the trunk. Let's show you that right here. So you've got a decent amount of space right here. And then underneath this space where the soft top folds down, it's very deep. So if you have any low and compact luggage, you can just slide it all the way back there. A little bit more room than you get in some other convertibles in this class. It looks pretty decent too with the top up. Let's fold that down and see what it looks like in convertible form. So you've got this little button down here, right next to the parking brake. I did accidentally hit the parking brake button a couple times this week while driving. You can fold this top down at speeds up to 31 miles per hour, which is pretty convenient. Love this spec, love this interior. These seats are just fantastic. Carbon fiber everywhere. Besides this button here, everything else is pretty much the same as the standard M4. The only difference is getting in the back is super easy because it's a convertible. You just hop back there and you're in. With the top down, windows up, wind buffeting isn't too bad. You get a little bit of air that passes through these seats that have lots of holes in them, but they are heated. So if you get a little chilly, you can just turn that button on and you are in good shape. Let's take a look under the hood at this three liter twin turbo in line six. This car's rated for 16 miles to the gallon in the city, 23 on the highway. 503 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque. Proper M engine, sounds the business. Just look at these seats. They are something to behold. They're actually pretty comfortable on a long trip. You get a lot of adjustment out of them. It may look like a super lightweight racing seat, but there are motors to adjust the side bolsters, the seat bottom, the seat back. Uh, you can move it in any way you want and find a pretty nice driving position. I will commend BMW. They've really gotten their driving positions down in these last couple generations of M cars. This is just about perfect. Steering wheel is right here, comes up to my chest. I have a really nice low seating position. Um, everything comes to hand and falls to hand beautifully. Love this iDrive infotainment. Really easy to use once you get acquainted with it. Uh, Harman Kardon sound system is all right. 
but otherwise it's a very easy to live with and usable car. All right, let's take this for a drive and get some quick driving impressions on what this is like behind the wheel. So the name of the game here is adjustability. We have a bunch of different drive modes and a bunch of different customizable options for our engine, chassis, steering, and brakes. We can even turn this into a rear-wheel drive car in a specific DSC off drift mode. So if you don't like your M4 and four-wheel drive, you can put it in a rear-wheel drive and slide it around a little bit, which is pretty cool. I have my M1 and M2 buttons set to brakes and sport, engine and sport plus and everything else into comfort. M2, things get a little bit more aggressive, goes into M dynamic mode, engines in sport plus, suspensions in sport, and steering and brakes are both in sport. I actually really like brake feel in sport. It's a little bit more linear, a little bit more usable on a daily basis, and it just has the right feel to it. We'll roll all of our windows up here. One press of a button. And this is a pretty nice convertible. We spent a lot of time in this car this week with the top down, and it was really pleasant to enjoy this M4 as a convertible. You can hear the engine better. You just get a little bit of wind in the cabin, which I think is part of the experience. The ZF eight speed is super responsive. Despite the weight penalty here with this convertible, it is really quick. This is a properly fast M car still. rotating around corners. This all-wheel drive system isn't as rear biased as I was expecting. It's pretty stable, but you just get a nice little amount of rotation, full throttle around a corner in the drive. We'll chase down some more entrance ramps here in a minute, but Overall, the front end on this car is really sharp. Surprising amounts of turn and grip. Ride quality is nice. When you put everything back into comfort. Engine quiets down. The ZF8 speed selects the tallest gear for maximum fuel economy. Unfortunately, we don't get adaptive cruise control in our $100,000 BMW M4. That's probably an option somewhere. So we just have good old fashioned standard cruise control. Definitely something that we missed on this trip this week. 78, 79 miles per hour on the highway. I am very comfortable in this car. This feels great. We've got some slightly larger paddles, carbon fiber. They are set inboard quite a bit to the steering wheel, but that does allow you to get a pretty good grip on the wheel without uh, them getting in the way. All right, we'll put the top up here and give you guys an idea of what this is like to drive with the roof up. Again, you can do this at speeds up to 31 miles per hour, which is super convenient. A 
bit more understeer in this M4 convertible than the standard coupe, but it still has really sharp driving dynamics. You get these Pilot Sport 4S tires warmed up, and it absolutely rips. Power is still fantastic. Only complaint is there's a little bit more tire noise from these Pilot Sport 4S's than I would like. You had some expansion joints, just general road noise, it's all a bit loud, but that's pretty typical for the Pilot Sport 4S. amount of torque too. And I do really like the way this B58 sounds. still a proper M car and I think for it being a convertible it still has plenty of performance. It's very stable with the all-wheel drive system. This car gives you a ton of confidence on back roads. Stay tuned for that video that'll be a fun one. when you're just driving it around normally, it settles down to a reasonable level of comfort. It's still an M car, it's still a little bit harsh and uh, a little bit immediate and loud and crashy, but if you want something that's comfortable, get an M440i. It's a very easy car to drive, super approachable, very predictable, never catches you out, and I do like that about this. Because this is a convertible, safety is a little bit more of uh, a priority. I've got to say, if I missed the DCT in the M4 Coupe, I don't miss it as much in this competition convertible. It actually really suits the character of this car really well. Makes some really nice shift decisions on its own and the paddles are very satisfying to use as well. We have a couple different exhaust modes, valve open and valve closed. definitely does get a little bit more muted with the exhaust mode button turned off. But we'll turn that back on. It just sounds better.
Sometimes all the adjustability is a little bit overwhelming in this M4, but that's okay. At least you can kind of set this to what you want, given your mood. All right, we've got to do a quick launch control here. Test out the brakes, build boost. Combine that with the top-down experience in this car, and you've got a pretty nice M4. It's comfortable enough, it's efficient enough, it's fast enough, it just kind of does it all well and uh, takes everything in stride. It's a very solid feeling car. Uh, take this on a back road, and it just gives you a ton of confidence. You can really push this. The limits are incredibly high. You can see back there, the all-wheel drive system just lets you have just a little bit of fun, but it does it in a safe way. It's not snappy or anything, even in four-wheel drive sport with M-Dynamic mode turned on. Basically, I think that the convertible driving experience in this more than makes up for some of the performance shortcomings with this M4 convertible with regards to weight and lack of rigidity compared to the coupe. Without the competition package, without the extra power, this wouldn't be quick enough. And as it sits, it's probably about the sweet spot in terms of power to weight. Compared to some other options in the market, it's still a little bit harsh, but it doesn't beat you up and it's never exhausting to drive. Also, chances are wherever you live, you have better roads than we do here in Michigan. Alright guys, well that's going to wrap up our video on the M4 Competition X-Drive Convertible. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll be coming out with some more content on this car, and we finally got some good back road driving here in the northern part of Michigan. So, no more entrance and exit ramps here in Metro Detroit. We've got some proper roads that we took this on. Anyway guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take care.